Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden and this week is Abstract Art Journaling Series number 13 and I'm going to talk about uh, subtle values that uh, happened in this page. Um, so here I'm starting with uh, that big circle uh, uh, piece that uh, I never really end up using. I try, but one day it's going to get on there. And of course, my new stencils, the geometric uh, shapes, and my stencil girl stencils. And you can see with the, um, let's see, the, the, the uh, deli paper that I ordered from Amazon there. Um, just trying some different papers, so I just grabbed a whole bunch. I probably grabbed too much, and then I had so many choices. Um, this one was a hard, a, a difficult page for me just to get through it. Um, some days are better than others, and I'm sure we can all relate. So I've gessoed the surface, put the tape around, and um, uh, next I'm going to use some mixed medium uh, matte and just paint around the edges just to stop any bleeding. Depending on um, what I'm using, if I'm using more collage, more paint, and now I'm showing you um, the turquoise paint colors. So I use a mixture of Liquitex, Artist Loft from Michael's um, Craft Store, and then your, your basic Liquitex, um, a really nice, really nice quality paint. And I'm trying to focus in on uh, simplifying my palette using blues. Still haven't discovered um, a lot of the layering that I'm looking for and, you know, still need to do more exploring. And I think, um, as I've mentioned in the previous video, I'm going to start expanding on onto other substrates, multiple substrates, the wooden panels, and um, show you how I work on those. And uh, yeah, it's just time for a change. This is a nice uh, 11 by 14 Canson mixed media paper. It's It's been great, but I really still prefer the thicker watercolor paper. Um, and that's what I was painting my Of Earth and Sky abstracts on, and I do promise to get back to those. So I'm also cleaning up my area so it's simple and less busy, and it just looks good for recording. And in this palette, uh, before I just let it dry and add some more colors, just a couple, I think it was a yellow oxide, very similar to yellow ochre, I'm just... Uh, playing with the idea of just atmosphere and soft edges. Um, using different blues, different values. So I start with a, a pretty strong tone and then I start adding a little more white. And um, not with a particular direction. Um, not really liking those brush strokes so that I'm going over them with a brayer thinning out this layer, and then of course, it allows it to dry much more quickly. And then of course, that beautiful light blue, it is very opaque, so it is a very good covering paint uh, for layers. Manganese blue is so very uh, transparent and useful in other ways. So getting to know which paints, opacity, translucency are good, depending on what what you're, um, what you're wanting, and then we're building up these experiencing experiences and then uh, acquiring some preferences. So I'm still in that stage um, before I work on my big canvases. I just still haven't ex found the combination of layers that I'm liking that really get that feeling. I still I have no idea yet what I'm gonna what I'm gonna need, but I'm just still going to um, keep exploring. So I've got black, I've got I believe, what is that? Um, anyway, that very strong blue with the turquoise, the light blue and the white, 
Um, my other favorite is Payne's Gray as well, and it's very transparent. Um, uh, I didn't use it for this page, but I definitely will try it um, with experimenting with more blues. So I'm just sort of just getting some areas down. Um, while I'm looking at it now, I could have uh, made it more dark to light. And of course, just drawing that with my little dryer. And then thinking, okay, um, I want to put some pieces down, some collage pieces, but I want to, I don't want a high contrast. So I'm using similar uh, with blue. And then if it is a high contrast, say the yellow ochres, um, you know, oranges, um, um, I want to keep the ratio low, and I think that is going to have a huge effect for the feeling that I'm looking for. And as you can see, I'm just putting things down. I'm not liking the black, staying away from that typical dark, but even though that, that really emits the feeling that I'm looking for, I just want to experiment with using black in different ways, different opacities, and different ratios and shapes. So I know I wanted something there to push that back. And then of course I peeled my China marker a little too much. So I just used that and just starting subtle layers. And here's a piece. See if, if you just use different piece, different designs. And then I jumped to, so what I did is I let that layer dry and then I added a few more colors to the palette, used the stencil, and I, and I apologize for where this little piece of video uh, disappeared. I don't know what happens uh, when that occurs. Um, I think sometimes it just it, it didn't download, but I will try to watch that in the future videos. So anyway, so once you get a layers down that you like, so I did end up adding black, and then of course the uh, newsprint uh, paper, the neutral with the black mark on the upper left. And now I'm seeing, uh, it, it's now turning into a simple grid or quadrants. And that big blob that I just finished circling, that's done with ink on just, just ordinary copy paper. So then I just start dripping some more inks. Um, I use, uh, it's acrylic ink, so blues, neutrals, even some gold, um, and of course, um, I've been really been attracted to the bamboo skewers in the types of very thin lines that they make. And of course, I didn't really like the blobs, so I'm rolling them out because I'm always liking the surprise oval shape that the that the brayer creates and depending if you go horizontal or vertical so then pushing another layer back and putting it on very very thinly you can see those uh, geometric shapes and what i'm going for is having some black shapes black layers mixed with white and then covered again so they're very subdued and then going uh, stronger as you're coming up to the surface. So with these, you might want to go uh, white on black or black on white. And that's what I'm just still exploring um, as I'm just getting used to these new stencils. So yes, so this seems, see that upper corner? You can see the black underneath, but now it's pushed with the white hexagons overlapping. And I'm just using certain areas. And as I put a new layer on top, I'm still allowing some of the previous area uh, layers to peek through. So it all comes together. Yes. <laughs> Moving fast, you can, you know, but just keeping those materials close by, you know, handy J cloth, you can wipe it up quickly. 
And I know uh, some of you have been mentioning about the putting the glue on top of the surface, and I would agree. Yes, um, it does not dry the same as a medium. So I've been keeping that in mind. And um, if I do need to put something on the surface to smooth it out, I'm uh, trying, not always, but I'm trying to make sure I use the acrylic medium, which is uh, better for another layer of paint on top. Um, and which is water, it dries water resistant. It isn't water soluble. So you would get a completely different effect. So just getting rid of that, um, just pushing that big black um, sprawling shape or um, I don't know what you would call it, very organic shape back into the paper or the page. And then here comes a very, um, my transparent deli paper, just playing with ideas. Um, I'm really liking the quadrants in the upper area. So that's what you can do too. Um, have a time, and I haven't had time, I've been so busy with um, the other part of my life, <laughs> which is, uh, is, is teaching. So uh, we, go we go through different stages and different busyness. So um, can't wait to get through this little phase and get back to exploring more consistently and showing up more during the week to explore and be able to take what I'm learning here, like onto uh, other canvases, etc. like I mentioned before. Um, so you can see it's, it's quadrants, but now it's beginning to get organized compositionally into, say, thirds. And you can, you know, you can go thirds with subdivided into little subtle areas. And that's what I've been exploring in my larger work with images, uh, sections, and then having images inside, and then other things happening inside of each other. It's sort of, uh, it's, it's complicated and yet it isn't complicated. So, <laughs> you know, we all have these things, these goals that we're trying to, or these feelings and emotions that we're trying to communicate through our art. And that's the part that I really enjoy. So here's this subtle um, wavy line that ends up at the bottom, which is, I think, the best place for this. So now I'm bringing in a little bit of contrast, and I'm just in the back of my mind keeping that, okay, if I just use a little bit of the opposite of blue, it'll really make the blue look more blue. And I'm really liking that gray that's surrounding those yellow oxide uh, six circles that I made with my finger. And now I'm putting in this piece of collage. Really liking the thinness, the transparency, I, I mean, of this paper, and yet it's strong. So it's better than the, what do you call it, the tracing paper that I was using before that seemed to tear as soon as I rubbed across it with a brush. So here comes some more, uh, more of a white layer. And I don't know how thickly I put it on, but I'm sort of liking it. I might even now, looking at it now, oh good. See that bear just lifted it up enough. Yes. And now you have some op opa opaque. Uh, you could have used, I could have used dots, lines, anything else. Um, which is a difference with the transparency. So it just added another bit of subtlety without high contrast. So there's a lot of interest going on in that upper area. And um, pretty soon I will add uh, a big horizontal um, yellow oxide um, yes, I did like those brush strokes and really liking how my brayer, yes, and this is how this happens. So I'm going, oh, okay. So I'm reacting, putting in some more neutral, but it's, it's okay. Putting in some line 
it's not bad, but it really doesn't punch. So I'm sort of just here pausing, making a decision. Oh, and this is my go-to. I didn't want to, and that's why I was pausing, but I really like how these opaque circles overlap this subtle, la subtle layer, layer and push it in the background. So, and I know, I know I've used this on my um, Of Earth and Sky pieces, but I really like them in this piece. And then again, I, I, like I said, I, I end up putting a nice horizontal, high contrast um, area of yellow oxide in there. So now I'm just adding and playing with different um, different strengths of hue, uh, what will be, which would be also different values, and trying to notice those things more and more as I gain more experience. And this is this doesn't happen well for me at least. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, as we gain more experiences, um, we tend to notice more. So going with a really light blue here, not bad. I don't know if that stays. Oh yeah, okay. And that's a good go-to that I use as well. I don't want to erase it totally. Oh, and then, yeah, I notice it did. Okay, so then I just sort of brush that off. But now I've gone over the white layer and that's fine and I could have scraped through it as well and I'm being trying to be careful to make up for what I just rubbed away but yet not not going too far down into those previous layers so that putting that piece right there in the in um, on the top more opaque layer. So just making sure I'm drying this up so I don't smudge it or anything because I'm really liking, I'm really liking how this foam uh, picks up the paint and leaves such an interesting texture. If I can find more different shapes or even uh, explore using a half, oh, there I go, uh, that would be nice. So remembering to scratch through, adding some more subtlety, with the um, bamboo skewer um, is very, very, uh, was a very good idea, I think, and I'm just testing it to see if it's dry. Now, I do believe I need the black and just trying to carry on that shape, yes, throughout. So I'm just creating a little more unity with the hexagon just in that darker area and just some subtle just just not using the whole stencil um, you can go light yes i'm really liking that so now there's more horizontal being created here which is a little more uniform and consistent, consistency, I should say. And keeping those little, little gray neutral pieces pretty close by, I really like that place. So now what I'm trying to do is eliminate some of the busyness. As you've seen, my, my work can get very complex. So I'm trying to allow um, and learn different ways to create some space, some calmness, to make the the better more, the better areas pop out even more. So I'm really liking that. I'm thinking of numbers. Um, where should they go? Should they even go in here? Um, so pausing. I love the pausing. In the, the pausing stages because 
it's just, you know, should I go for a piece of collage? Am I looking for, oh yes, very good. And I'm running low of my neutral, uh, this is just tissue paper. So it's just a natural tissue paper. I just love it. Such, oh. So that calms that down and now it's bringing your eye down the right side. And it's beginning to come together now. Um, I like to use glass with my palette. I find, um, and I'm trying to use, not put so much paint out for a page, you know, compared to a painting. You know, I, f I find that that has taken a while. And, uh, and I hate to waste paint. So now I just let that dry, took a peek and decided, yes, it really needed a nice thick line, which is such a difference compared to those circles and the hexagons. And it just added this beautiful area. And I'm noticing the stronger the hue is looking better than just the very light value that I started to uh, apply. And then just caring and remember we're treating, we're trying to look at the painting as a whole. And if you're, you know, of course that was the only area that I wanted that. And I already had some uh, ochre or oxide in the lower uh, right and across the, the lower bottom area. So I'm going for my grab of subtle little pieces. And whenever you're doing that, it means you're coming near the end. So I think I'm past the tricky middle stage at this point. Of course, I'm really wanting some text. Um, I have not yet purchased any text but from Etsy or the writing or the old antique text. Um, leave a comment if you have a good resource or if you've uh, used some that has been very successful. And we can share where we can get these different things, these different items. So I've got a circle punch uh, that I got from Michaels. And as I was putting those circles out, I noticed the subtlety. Uh, this piece is heavily textured. It has that neutral light. And I just love it there because it's it doesn't stick out. It adds that interest without overpowering the horizontal row of circles. And these really cool shapes down below that add a, just a little bit more of the blue and orange or blue and ochre. Um, and those were cut out from uh, papers that I've made just rolling with my brayer after I've had a painting session and using up the paint from that palette. Oh, I really like that. Um, old textbook or library, and then putting that text on that side, lightening that up. I really like that. And then trying to carry down the eye. Uh, so thinking, you know, the 369, different symbologies that I use trying to do that swooshy um, thing with my finger and I still, eh, it's not bad, not bad. Oh yeah, that's much better that I scratched through it. And I like that it's uh, thicker to thin, so now it's on an angle. Very cool. So finishing up, coming into the details and I think now uh, looking at the top left with those dark dots, uh, the eye does go up there. I may have put a little bit of white, maybe push those back a little bit more. But other than that, um, maybe even use a little bit of these uh, splashes a little bit more heavily. But remember, you can always come back to your pages and make those adjustments. Um, really... Um, Liking the different shapes, loving the top subtleties, and um, just finishing up with some last decisions 
and I'm being careful not to overdo it. And I think I'm going to start removing the paint soon. Oh, so that, there we go. So carrying that light blue through across to where that text is and breaking up that middle, that heavy dark area where the eyes seem to stay, which I notice now. And when, we're, when you're working intuitively, uh, you do things that you might not notice while you're doing them uh, or the why. And it's, you know, so you spin back out and you go, oh, okay. And then you've got to spin back in. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, so I'm finishing up drawing this page and warming up that tape. So uh, I get a really nice removal without tearing anything. And uh, there may or may not be some papers that are past the edge, but really easy to clean up with an X-Acto knife. And um, I thought, well, why not? Uh, you can, oh good, so too much drying. And here we go, oh, a little bit of trouble there. And I know when I'm rolling the brayer, when I'm, you know, I, I don't paint, put the tape on right away, so I'm trying to stay away from the edges. So even if it goes past, it's okay. It's still a nice clean edge. Um, really liking that effect with the tape. And sometimes I use the white, sometimes I use the blue. The green has been the best, uh, easiest to remove without any gesso for the first layer. And it's amazing what sometimes your, atten your intentions can be and what you end up with. Sometimes you're closer to your intention and sometimes it's just great to just ride with the wave and see what happens. So this one was, I think I put, yes, subtle values. And um, I think I'm getting closer as I see some results. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe.